Hi, this is Decentered Media, conversations about community-focused communications for positive social change. Hello, Rob Watson here for Decentered Media, and welcome to the latest uh, episode of the Decentered Media podcast, where we talk about um, issues and matters related to community media, uh, decentralized media, DIY media, um, as we... um, increasingly uh, see our media becoming more fragmented and as platforms change and as expectations about communication change, uh, we kind of need to figure out how to make sense of what our media does and how it does it. And this is my contribution towards that discussion. Um, And I come at this from a background of community media, which is Groups of people getting together to volunteer to create media for themselves, uh, to manage and run the platforms for themselves, and to set the agenda and the topics of what they discuss and consider for themselves. So it's very much a kind of grassroots DIY kind of approach, and it's outside of the traditional um, commercial and public service type of approach. It's very much about uh, hands-on engagement. It's deprofessionalized. It's uh, a little bit chaotic and a little bit like herding cats, but that's the the benefit of this. There's some really good work goes on, and there's also some um, <clears throat> some 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 work that always wants improvement. But that's the point. You know, one of the things we do in community media is we learn as we go along. So we're not applying um, expectations and standards of professionalism. However, you might define that. What we are saying is that people contribute, and it's uh, yeah. It, the Ruskin phrase, which I use a lot, is it's not what we get for what we do; it's what we become by what we do. So it's a process of engagement, a process of discovery, a process of dialogue, a process of learning from one another. And our aim uh, really is to enhance. Uh, our our sense of community, our sense of belonging, our sense of engagement with one another so that we are uh, in a a world which is increasingly, seemingly increasingly divided. We live very much, you know, in in modern Western society, we live very isolated, individuated, individualized lives. You know, we we don't uh, engage, certainly here in the UK, and I know it's very different in other places, but neighborliness, a common sense of identity. All of these things are kind of steamrolled by uh, commercial models of media, so branding and identification with certain uh, commercial aspects of our lives, whether it's, you know, we, we've seen the rise of uh, football as a brand-led, globalised gland brand led marketing exercise uh whereas when it you know it's it's its roots are in community identity and uh pastimes and hobbies related to collective identity through a sense of belonging <clears throat> anyway what i want to kind of talk about today is uh, i've posted a couple of blogs uh in the last few days about one is, is is called social needs communication, and the other one is community media as a social impact tool. Um, and my thinking on this was that I had a conversation earlier in the week where we were talking about what differentiates community media, and I use I'm use this in a broad sense. I'm agnostic about the phrase uh, community media. I don't care what platform you use, and I don't care what kind of devices you come at this with. I always say sitting down with a a friend and having your cup of tea or coffee together and having a chat is a form of community media. It's a form of communing. Um, How how much we then kind of apply uh, the industrialized and the systematized uh, version of that meaning. Well, you know, this is a space outside that. So we see. So the conversation we had was about. What's your start and impulse? And the start and impulse is, is not necessarily to produce media. It's to have an impact within your community. It's to um, bring about some form of social change, which is positive and which relates to your community in a way which enhances it, makes it more resilient to change, makes it more adaptable, makes it more expresses itself as its own self, so sense of confidence and identity, uh, and plays a more sustainable role within uh, a wider society. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm still recovering from a COVID cough, um, and it gets to me every now and again. So, 
the 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 challenge i think with community media is it's always to start from the premise of you've got to work backwards and you've got to ask the question you know what does it do in practice how do people um engage with the content that you produce and now everybody would say you know a, a commercial or a public service model is typically based on an audience driven model but what does that mean and typically it's kind of a passive approach to engagement so you provide content you provide an information service you provide an entertainment service to your audience to your listeners and viewers and your subscribers and people who engage with your content and it's one of many products that they uh, can access and do they find it useful is there a utilitarian exchange value in this does it keep them abreast of events so is it newsworthy Uh, does it give them insight does it give them a sense of reassurance so there's a kind of passivity uh, we always say in, in about this because what you're not asking people to do is to get directly involved in the production and the development of that media and community media and community radio in the UK is the only platform legal platform for broadcast which has access accessibility and engagement at the heart of its principles so the idea that uh, you know somebody living in a town or a city or you know across the uk there's a local community radio station and you can go and get involved in that you can volunteer for it you can uh you're a member of their target community uh whether that's by uh local local identity or whether it's by faith-based identity or ethnic identity uh, cultural identity is that you can go along and you can say yes I, I would like to help out and I'd like to be part of uh, the process of putting content together and sharing that content and supporting the operations of the station or the project and developing that and that's pretty unique and it's not really well understood that that's the founding principle of community radio in in the UK the, it came out of the Everett report which is about access radio and that the fundamental principle is that citizens um, people who live in neighborhoods and communities can get involved and take part in in a way that's relevant and so if it's a children's station then children can get involved if it's a station with a religious um, uh, uh, identity then people of that faith can get involved and so it's uh, you know it's very much driven by the and I, I kind of the the the, the 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 nature of civic engagement and civic participation. And the fundamental principle that drives this is that by doing something and being involved in the way things are run, we we are enhanced as citizens because we take responsibility uh, for, for how things work and how things operate. Rather than having things done for us or done to us, community media works on the basis that it's we are doing things for ourselves, we are setting our own, uh, uh, agenda in terms of the way that we represent ourselves and the way that we interact with other people and other communities. So it's not just about uh, uh, promoting ourselves, it's also about representing ourselves within the, the mix of other communities that exist in any uh, society. Uh, just happens that my example here in Leicester is that it's a, it's, it's a very mixed environment, it's a super diverse city. And it makes your head spin sometimes when you've got kind of lots of different people. But people I talk to, everybody likes the, you know, everybody values the the, the diversity of Leicester and thinks it's a positive because it changes the nature of the social experience. But how much do we understand about each other? So I'm involved with a project at the moment, which is with Leicester Community Radio, where we are collecting some stories. Uh, It's funded by De Montfort University, their public engagement, uh, DMU Engage. Um, and we're, we're gathering stories uh, where we're just asking people simple questions. Uh, what was it like growing up in Leicester? Or what was it like arriving in Leicester? I arrived in Leicester 30 years ago. Uh, and I, I, you know, ha- I have a story to tell. So it's nice to sit and listen to other people and find out what their stories are. And actually, very the, the conversations we've had so far, and it's early days in the project, are, are very positive. People like to talk about their sense of belonging. But the question is, where does that get expressed within our... You know, you would think that a lot of what we do in our... You know, by reading our mainstream media and the more commercially driven 
models of news and information distribution that we are antagonistic society that we're uh, you know we're very much divided and actually when you sit down and talk to people you find that there's a huge range of common values that people appreciate and people are drawn to they just don't get expressed in the way that is uh, of their own words and their own experiences that relate to uh, their own life journeys and I think that's really important that we give people the opportunity to take part and to share so what we're going to do is capture those stories as many as we can and we're going to play them out of some programs uh, on Leicester Community Radio and there's an idea you know there's a sense that this hopefully will in- improve the sense of community cohesion because it'll improve the sense of understanding of where people are coming from how people what people bring with them what people's understandings are and that exchange of information is really vital but community radio really i mean i know i know other broadcasters will say that they do this and and media operators say that will do this but they don't really they do it they don't really do it by uh, public engagement models what they do is they and co-development models what they do is they kind of do it for people so you have a set of small team of producers who go out and find the story and then re-relate that story rather than bringing together a group of people to and I'd, i've produced um a, a a model for this a community reporting model uh, which is available on the decentered media website which which kind of articulates this idea of of sharing stories citizens uh, neighbours, uh, uh, you know, fellow members of our identified community are, are happy to share content and uh, engage with one another in very simple ways, in ways that are not about, it's not journalism in that traditional sense, but it does facilitate understanding of how a community operates operates so the question is how do we measure the impact of this how is it that we can come to understand um you know what difference are we making because it's always you know we always have to ask the question that's fine in theory but how does that work in practice and knowing and understanding what impact we're having I think it's you know it's vital. One, we have to use it. We have to know what impact we're having so we can improve what we're doing. Two, we also have to tell other people what we're doing. We have a responsibility to uh, to, to communicate with our our uh, the people that we're uh, working with, the community that we are engaged with, in order to be able to help them to understand uh, what the benefit is of having these assets, these opportunities to to, to develop services, broad media services in in different ways. Um, and so coming together with a kind of uh, 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 a, a process by which this can be done is quite difficult because we don't have a, most community media uh, projects and organizations don't have massive resources to employ technical researchers to do evaluation projects. So you kind of got to do it in a way that fits the resources that are available. One good uh, resource that I saw the other day was from Good Finance, and they have produced an outcomes matrix, which looks at social impact that um, uh, social finance driven organisations make. And I thought, actually, this can be adapted. Maybe it's not as as the start of a conversation rather than it's not going to answer every question and satisfy every need or fit every situation, but it will kind of open up the process and there's not they have an online uh, uh interactive t- uh, type of um tool that can you can use to measure uh, if you're a funding organization that you can use to look at how you're spending your 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 uh, assets you're using your assets and you're making a difference because why are we doing anything if it doesn't make a difference? Uh, we may as well just be sitting around virtue signaling and that's easy to do. Social media is full of people who are virtue signaling, but there are very few uh, ways. It's much more difficult to actually identify what difference we actually make in practice. And I think that focus into, you know, these are tried and tested techniques that come out of community development, for example, uh, but also other other areas in terms of, you know, kind of uh, 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 economic development and uh, um, industrial development, things like education, those those things. So the, the, pro, the, the process here 
they, 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 uh, the model that Good Finance uh, identify has uh, a set of areas uh, that it looks at where people are working. This is their model, and I think it can be adapted in the outcomes matrix. It includes things like arts heritage. There's a blog post on the Decentered Media website for this, and I'll put the link in with the uh, with, with, with 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 this podcast. There's so uh, art heritage, sports and faith, citizenship and community conservation of the natural environment, employment, education and training, family, friends and relationships, housing and local facilities, income and financial inclusion, mental health and well-being, physical health. And that's a really, I think that's, you know, you, you just, that's a good starting point for a list of uh, issues to look at within your uh, operations that indicate, you know, on each measure, how, how, what difference are you making? Uh, and they have a lens. They have a set of lenses which they believe that you can you know, you you can focus on with that. So these are big, comprehensive issues. But if you try and focus it down, and, and the four lenses they've identified are: people are high risk of harm, disadvantage, and discrimination. Uh, homeless people, uh, people affected by insecure housing, people for, uh, aff- uh, affected by insecure, economically insecure by poverty and by, uh, you know, kind of uh, lack of access to uh, val- good value work opportunities, that kind of thing. Uh, people of protected characteristics, so your social identity, whether it, you know, there's 13 protected characteristics, uh, uh, uh uh, sexual orientation, sex, uh, ability, disability, um, those kind of things, race um, are, are in there. <clears throat> Your socio socioeconomic status, um, because we, you know, I think the mainstream. One of the criticisms, and I think it's a valid criticism, is mainstream uh, media. And, and a lot of ma- academic work these days looks a lot at identity, but it doesn't look at class. So our social class, do you have access to assets and resources? And do you have an ability to call on social capital uh, that enables and facilitates uh, uh, greater interaction and use of uh, services like accountancy services and legal services and you know technical knowledge or I, I sort of I read 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 this the other day it was a great way of describing class it's something that Alexi Sale uh, the uh, the Liverpool comedian uh, said which is that you, the difference between middle class and working class is middle class people have friends you can give them help with company directorships and legal advice working class people know somebody with a van and i thought that was a really you know it's it, it, it's it's maybe simplistic but it's uh, it's there's a certain element of uh, a large element of truth in terms of what are your social assets and how do we take that into account so you know it's all very well saying that you know we should we should all listen on smart to radio on smart speakers uh, but can you afford to buy a smart speaker and do you have uh, uh, resources for a, a phone contract you know a, mo- a data prov- provider contract uh, are, are you nearby to a sufficiently robust data you know uh, broadband system something like that these are and whereas radio is fm and am radio it's tried and tested and it's very cheap so it's got this accessibility which is which is vital and then geography so where you know and, and i think maybe the, the phrase geography can be can be maybe adapted to place because you know the identification with place is really important what's interesting is that none of this is you know none of this is new this has been you know, kind of regurgitated many times in government, different government policies. And if you read the government legislation uh, on levelling up uh, and it has the social capitals model, these are often things that are expressed in this about identification with the place. But we never connect our media with this. What is the social benefit of having community driven media that has the purpose of enhancing people's uh, capacity to develop their uh, uh, their 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 standing, if you like, uh, in in these in these ways. So putting together a matrix helps us to ask questions about each of those elements. You know, what is it that we are? So art, heritage, sports, and faith, for example. What are our local, you know, your know, cultural attributes? You know, we often make assumptions about these things, and I think, you know, one one of the things that you le- you learn from undertaken research is 
it's not what people say, it's what people do that you really need to be attuned. You know, you need to be observant. And we might talk about operate, you know, we might hear people tell us that they, yes, they're, you know, they're, 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 they practice their faith in one way. But when you watch people, you find it's something else is actually at play. So having that kind of, I, I like, you know, participant observation is a very important model of, of uh, research for me. And, and being embedded in a community and being able to see and follow what is, is being undertaken in that community is really important. But it's kind of, you know, what, 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 what is it that's there? And making assumptions and seeing things only through the lens of the mainstream, commercialised, industrialised media is not good enough. And we need to articulate ways to get into that and find out what's actually going on and to... And it just takes a long process, but we also need to be able to express that ourselves in terms of valuing what the what the work is that we do as a community media uh, process itself that we drive ourselves. And part of this, you know, is kind of fostering civic engagement and community co- cohesion. And that's a great sentiment, but how do we do that? And how do we deal with conflict in those situations? How do we deal with reputations and relationships? How do we manage the competing assertions that and assumptions that people make about one group or one person and another? And all of this is complex. All of this is 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 the day to day bread and butter of a a, a, a functioning society that people will see things from different perspectives. And at what point do we form a collective view? And at what point do we, uh, you know, identify our, our, our unique views or those of our, our you know, kind of our, our to use a phrase, a, a, a poorly expressed phrase, which is our tribe, which are a lot of what modern social media wants us to do, to, to be very tribal and to not, reach out and have dialogue it's very much antagonistic and it's very in, you know it promotes indignation rather than understanding and i think one of the roles of community media if it's managed well is to promote a sense of understanding to promote a sense of engagement so the the matrix can be very useful and certainly the link is on the on on the blog for this and i'd certainly recommend uh, taking a look at it and in the context that thinking about what social needs are and community media has these principles of of which are kind of for me are, are, are if you know it's like the stick of rock and this is the letter and through the 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 rock it's uh, uh, the the bar of rock it's like participation access and participation as I said earlier people being able to engage directly for themselves in the process of being involved with and creating their own and taking responsibility for their own media and not waiting for somebody else to provide it. You know, we we do have a lot of available resources now. I'm sitting in front of a webcam uh, on my computer. Well, that's, you know, it it, it might not be, I might not be the, 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 you know, the, the, the the best youtuber with the fanciest set and the greatest kit but i can it's passable and we need to not worry about the technical proficiency because there's a lot of uh uh, devices out there that we can use and utilize to that have transformed the way that we can do this you know it's no longer most people on their mobile devices their phones have capacity you know, media capacity that is is undreamt of 20 years ago you know it was it was a, a different world when we were thinking about this and yet there's a lag in our understanding that you know we have this citizen journalism model for example <clears throat> and and you know the I, i'm in favor of uh professionalization when it comes to certain values like uh investigation integrity and truth um so in our journalism for example but um i'm also in favor of opening that process up so that more people can engage in that process and understand it uh so things like uh being sensitive to the needs of of a community and that community being able to speak for itself and articulate its voice for itself uh, and doing that on the basis of a kind of collaborative shared purpose, but also recognizing that you are also interacting with other communities, and you, we, we're not just islands, you know, in, in, interact, you know, doing things by ourselves or for our own sense of uh, uh, purpose. But we also have to, in any society, we have to moderate that, moderate that with the uh, the needs and the, um, you know, the the. Um, 
what's the word I'm looking for? The uh, the respect that we need to show to other members of, of, of our common common society. And if we we're not able to show respect for others, um, then we you know we, we're not a dem- democracy. Um, so there's an impact and an action that goes to this. And how do we measure and understand that? And is this is part of a sustained process of engagement? It's not just something that we do once but we it takes time i would say you know kind of community media travels at the speed of trust is one of my aphorisms and uh, trust very travels very slowly nobody trusts our media so community media really does it it crawls along you know this is not an easy fix we're not going to get instant solutions you're not going to pour the boiling water into the pot noodle and 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 instantly you've got a a meal there in 30 seconds no this is going to take generations i think I'm, i'm of the opinion that the work that needs to be done is going to um going to take place it's a multi-generational project and we've got to get the 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 footing right now in order to be able to ensure that if there's a legacy each generation takes ownership of this process for themselves and passes that on to a future generation because they see the benefits of the long-term approach to this and particularly when it's in relation to things like climate crisis and you know you know the the ever expa- ever ever fraying social fabric caused by inequality i mean we're talking about people being destitute now uh literally destitute and that is you know the social fabric and our understanding of the social fabric well maybe we would come to a different view about how we manage our social policy if we hear more directly from people who are affected by uh and challenged by economic inequality and insecurity um so this is this is about participatory citizenship and that the decision making process should and and you know sometimes we look at policy making as a as a process of engaging with policy makers uh well my view is i have this i have this 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 i'm not very good at this and it would perhaps be a good way to uh, it, you know it's definitely an area of improvement before you walk into the room people need to know what it is that you're going to be advocating for and arguing for and what your position is on something not i'm not saying dogmatically um but in, on the basis that you've communicated it well in advance and that the reason that you go in the room is that people understand what it is you're asking for, what it is you're stating, what it is your position is and how you've arrived at that position and that you are not um, doing your, 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 your purpose as a community-focused organisation is not to just serve yourself, but you are meeting the needs of the people that you are uh, you know, trying to support and inspire and bring forward, and that you know that 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 social commitment, that um, social service, uh, is a big part of this. Is that it's not just about empowering yourself and speaking for yourself and taking all the glory for yourself, but it's also about uh, you know ensuring that other people have a voice in this process and inspiring those people uh, and and f- facilitating their learning so that they feel confident with their skills and their ability to speak for themselves uh, rather than maybe thinking that you know it's all about you you know and community media community development workers you know often it kind of you, the frustration is that there's too much of a burden placed on uh, those facilitators in order to feel that they are, uh, they have to do play that role. Uh, uh, but at the same time, you know, it's, it, it, it shouldn't be about us. It should be about those people that we are talking to and finding ways for them to have, have a voice in this process in many different ways as well and being creative about it. So I kind of, it's the benefits for this really is that, you know, a social uh, impact approach is really, you know, thinking about things like improved health and well-being. How do we measure that? How do we uh, account for that? Uh, Mobilisation of resources and influence to bring about environmental and behavioural changes. And I, I, I pull away from the behaviourist model of uh you know, kind of social the nudge model because i kind of find it very reductive you just need to nudge people in a certain way and they'll respond uh the, people have deeper motivations and you have to understand what people's motivations uh, are and they are shaped by 
cultures and faiths and symbolic frameworks in different ways. Uh, so just assuming that everybody is able to process information as if we're all computers um, is not what we should be thinking about. That intercultural understanding goes deeper. Um, so, you, you know, things like creating effective solutions that draw on local knowledge, you know, the asset based approach, the ABCD approach is really strong, you know, kind of look to what your assets are within a community. It takes time to develop. It takes time for people to crystallize around a common sense of purpose. But it, and it, it needs funding and support. Uh, a lot of the funding uh, calls that are available at the moment on, you know, on, online and, and through things like the National Lottery and things like that, they're fantastic, but they're often very short, short term. So you can get funding for six months or 12 months, but it's harder to get something for five years. And that's kind of the commitment that we need. We need a change in policy expectations that opens up our commitment to be able to... Um, uh, plan for the long term so that we've got some security and but within that process every penny is going to have to be accounted for and i think over the next the, to the end of the decade whatever government is in power it's all a question of value for money you know what are we getting for this are we wasting our money by doing this so the objectives have to be clear and what we deliver and what we are able to demonstrate we can deliver have to be clear as well so there's a lot of factors that you can you can look at, uh, which are available on the blog site as well. So um, you know what kind of opportunities are we creating for people to engage with one another? How do we increase trust in our own organisation so that we are valued as a uh, you know a, 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 an organisation with a social purpose, but also you know we're driven by um, open and transparent processes for development of our purpose uh it's not just a few people doing something for themselves if you like which is often the danger with small groups and that you need that motivation from a small group of people who are activists who advocate for something but in order for it to be trusted within a community it also has to be open and transparent about what drives that process and how other people can get involved with it so that transparency of access is really important and what you know what are the different values and principles that drive these things so if we're thinking about um you know understanding community needs we're looking at things like undertaking uh, 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 an examination of of the a community assessment um you know, there's there's a process called a sentiments analysis a media sentiments analysis where you look in an area uh, that that you know, what the kind of things that are going on in that area that are expressed through through media, and most of the time these things are done on the basis of looking at mainstream and corporate forms of media, so local newspapers, BBC Radio, uh, those kind of things, and it doesn't tend to look at things like you know the neighbourhood Facebook group or the WhatsApp group or the somebody's running a Twitter or X. Uh, a page where they they they're reporting on a topic or an issue or sharing information about that, and and that often get that level of engagement often gets overlooked. <coughs> so we're looking for for processes that uh, uh, facilitate inclusive communication based on the principles that we've talked about of engagement and participation. And ultimately, this is about capacity building. This is about, this is the, 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 the social model that's going to take some time is to build the capacity within our communities to have these conversations and to do so in a way that is um, verifiable, trusted, which is accountable. Um, and thinking about the way in which we monitor and evaluate that and, and the level of, uh, the way that we adapt to to things. So if something's not working, why are we doing it? There's a, there's a there's a um, an expectation maybe in in a lot of community radio circles that people are doing what they know from what they learned in the 1980s and 1990s about local radio, and it's kind kind of like uh, things of times have changed. You know, things are very different now, and that model maybe might be familiar. It might be reassuring. But we need to be pushing this and community media is a one way of saying, you know, lots more people now when they come to volunteer in um, community uh, in uh, media projects, if it's a community radio project, they're, they're, they're as likely now to come and say, well, I'd like to do a podcast. 
rather than I'd like to do a radio program. So people's expectations are different and we need to facilitate that and we need to embrace that and encourage creative use of different of the platforms and adapt and change and and bring new people in and and you know our our primary purpose is to give access and support and inspire new voices to come into the the mix uh so but we need collaborations and partnerships to do that both with government with public agencies with health services education services it needs to be partnerships that build this over time and it needs to be an investment that takes place over years you know with specific strategic objectives but it has to start somewhere and it has to finish it has a, has to have an identifiable goal and it has to be you know valued not just as a you know a, a, a transaction but it valued as for the people who are involved and i think that the, the principle of you know social value and uh, cultural value is tied with the notion of cultural democracy and social democracy and we really need to be thinking about how you know we facilitate and support that with our media and again you know the leveling up agenda a lot of really good stuff was said in the agenda but it didn't make the connection with media and the media bill that's going through parliament at the moment doesn't make the connection with the leveling up agenda and the frustration is that you know you need to bring these these things together um so that's kind of a broad overview and uh, i'm sure there's many more things that we can talk about uh as we kind of feedback give me some comments i'm always happy to have a conversation about this you can tweet me at decentered media uh if i'm posting this up on youtube uh then there's the comment section will be open on that and i'll check them uh, for comments as well uh, also, you can you know you can message me via the website, which is decentered.co.uk. One thing I would ask is um, you know I, I kind of provide this material for free. Uh, I'm very happy to continue to do this as long as I can, uh, but it would be great if uh, you could support me to to do this. The, the price of a coffee, three to five pounds a month. If enough people do this, uh, give me give me this little bit of support. I can help develop and improve. Uh, the podcasts and the material that I'm able to share. Uh, and then we can also start to engage in conversation. So I do, you get access to, if you support me on Patreon, uh, you get access to the Decentered Media Forum as well. Uh, and also we do regular uh, meetups online as well so we can have conversations about this. Uh, so that's at uh, patreon.com slash Decentered Media. Uh, but yeah, so uh, I look forward to hear from you. And until next time, have uh well make the best of the weather is what i'd say all right take care visit decentered.co.uk or follow us on instagram and twitter at decentered media